that that emptiness and that shapelessness must have been the work of the darkness i will tell you why because the bible tells me that god is light and in him is no darkness at all if god the light forms i know that the opposite of light is darkness darkness deforms so i believe in my heart that the shapelessness of the heart the emptiness of the earth as shown in genesis chapter 1 verse 2 must be the work of darkness so when god wanted to respond to that situation when god wanted to to answer to that situation he did not call things to fill the earth first he did not call form to come to the earth first what he did was to call forth the light and the bible says and god said let there be light now i want you to listen carefully to me i am coming back to this outline very shortly now but because i needed to set a platform for us to discuss i needed to bring to you why jesus is the light of the world and the light unto those who follow him and i will show you from the scripture who are the followers of jesus but first every time i have found god responding to darkness it is not by bringing a miracle or a prophecy it is first by bringing light because there is nothing else that can handle darkness apart from light speaking in tongues cannot handle darkness administration cannot handle darkness knowledge cannot handle darkness what can handle darkness is light so the first thing god said was let there be light now i want to take note of the word there there means a place there means a location and i want to see the word let there where darkness is there let light be and the bible said there was light because only where darkness is light is needed there was light not just light occurring arbitrarily light occurred at a specific place where darkness was now i want to listen because i want to say to you that whereas it is great to come to bible school it is great to be taught in this school but i like to say to you that this does not handle darkness knowledge of the bible cannot handle darkness i'm a product of bible school i have taught in bible school for years before i stopped teaching because i don't have time again to be teaching in bible school but i have come to know that a man may go to bible school and yet be under the bondage of darkness a man may be a pastor and a pastor of darkness a man may be a bishop and is a bishop of darkness a man may be a prophet and is a prophet of darkness so when god was going to respond the first thing that god did was to call for light and jesus said i am that light that light is not solar light it's not sunlight it's not moonlight it's not starlight it's not video light this light is a living light and that's why you are calling me you will have the light of life in money in you in money to you in money to you in money to you i wish i was talking to you about 
I wish I had the liberty of time to discuss that with you this evening. But please mark it that if God is also going to help our generation, if God is also going to help our nation Nigeria, it is not men who have Bible knowledge that will help us. It is not men who wear cassock will help us. Those that will help us must be lights that are living. Am I making sense to you? All right. So please follow. So Jesus came and said, I am the light of the world. For those of us who are good students of the Bible, you know that he used, Jesus used two words. The earth and the world. In Yoruba language, the two are called, uh, you can almost call the two aye, but earth in Yoruba is called ile. Tabi orile. World is called aye. But you see in the Bible, the earth is the planet where we dwell. The world is the expression of different lives lived on this planet. The system, the order, the principle, the philosophy, and the psychology of life on earth is called the world. The Bible says, ye are the salt of the earth. I can't go there. And then he said, ye are the light of the world. I'm not sure I can go there also. But I want to take note that for the earth, Jesus offered salt. For the world, he offered light. But before he did that, he first announced, I am the light of this world. In other words, the system of this world, the, the order of this world, the principle of this world, the style of this world is of darkness. I wish I could talk to you about it. I really, really wish. Oh God. You know one day I went to preach in the CAC church. And they asked me to come and speak on the worldly church. And I asked them, so what do you think is a worldly church? And they begin to give me answers. The church that does this. The church that does that. The church that does this. The church that uses this music. The church that dress this way. The church that does this. And they were telling me all sorts. And they look very great. So I took them to the Bible. Let the Bible define for us what is called the world. So we see the loss of the eyes. We see the loss of the flesh. And we see the pride of life. So I ask them. I try to explain each of them. So I ask them, who is free from those things? All of them kept quiet. So we think that once we are not using a ring as sisters and we cover our head as sisters and we don't lo allow our sister to wear trousers, we are not a worldly church. It looks so. But the world is smarter than that. The world is smarter. Who is here? Who is not having desire to make money? Who is here and is not having desire to be known? Desire to be respected. Now, I want to know because I don't want to stay there. There is somewhere I am running towards, but I like to quickly strike that. That when Jesus came and said, I am the light of the world, it is because the world has missed it, the world has been in darkness, and God sent him as a light to show the world what is correct for the world to follow as a pattern, as a lifestyle. Okay? Now he now said, 
he that followeth after me shall not walk in darkness, which is our main state, which is our main issue. Can I ask you to come to John chapter 12, verse 26, very quickly. The same John chapter 12, verse 26, because I need to quickly establish who is a follower of Jesus. Are you there? John chapter 12, verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Is that in your Bible, please? If any man serve me, what should he do, please? Let him follow me. So, Jesus, that we put a mark of approval on your life as his own servant. Then I will ask you to listen to him. I have learned years ago that serving Jesus is not preaching the word of God. I have learned years ago that serving Jesus is not abandoning my business and coming into ministry. Serving Jesus is following him. So when a man is not a follower, he's never a servant. When a man is, now I wish, I wish I could sit down and discuss with you. Honestly, I wish. But they told me that each session is one hour. And I want to abide with that. I want to walk with that. I want to run with that. But like, let me tell you this. There are two words or there are two people that look very much alike. But they are not the same. Follower and shadower a follower and who please a shadower if you don't understand the meaning of shadower you understand the, the word shadow abby does a shadow follows eh? shadow follows everywhere you are you will see your shadow Okay? What is the color of shadow, please? It's always black. It's darkness. Even though he's following, but he's always black. A shadower is a follower, but he's not following to be like the person is following. He's only following to learn the secret of that person so that he can enjoy him. He's a spy. And me, that's what Yoruba calls him. And me, Alami, Olan, Peni Ojiji. Geazi was a shadower. Even though he was following Elisha, the prophet, everywhere. He learned the language of Elisha. You know when Naaman brought money to Elisha, Elisha said, as the Lord God liveth, I will take nothing from your hand. That was the language of Elisha. When Naaman left, Gehazi also said, as the Lord liveth, I will run after this, this Syria. He learned the language of his master, but not the life of his master. That's a shadow. A lot of people are here in ministry. They have learned the language of Jesus, but they lack the life of Jesus. They are shadowers. They are not servants of Jesus. They have the language of Jesus, but the simplicity of Jesus is not in them. Look, it is strange. That today you see a man who says he's a prophet. And somebody who is as old as his mother is talking to him. And that woman is on his knees. Even his biological mother will have to kneel down to talk to him. I have never seen Mary kneeling down for Jesus to talk to Jesus. If you have seen it, show me. He says it's a respect to the man of God. Show me the example you are following. Show me if you are a follower of Jesus and if you have seen Jesus living like that. 
I'm asking you. The trouble we have is that we follow the world. A president, when he's sitting, even his mother cannot speak to him anyhow. Because he's an executive president. That is what the world does. But in Christ, it's a different ball game. Am I making sense to you at all? It's a different ball game. Some of us, we went to drop our titles when we saw Jesus. I used to be called Reverend Shekwa Rio before. But you see, one day, I was studying my Bible, John chapter 21, and Jesus had just resurrected, and he was carrying the glorious body. It can appear and disappear anytime. And Mary Magdalene was crying, was weeping to see her master. And Jesus appeared to her. And Jesus said, Mary, woman, why weepest thou? Whom are you looking for? And the woman turned and said, Oga gardener, if you are the one who have carried my Lord, show me where you have placed him. I will go and carry him myself. And I said, who do you call gardener? Is it my Lord that you call a gardener? So I sat down to check how did he dress for that woman to think Jesus was a gardener. And that was the Lord of Lords. That was the King of Kings. That was the man who was carrying a glorious body. You are carrying an ordinary body and you are boasting everywhere. You are a shadower. You are not a follower. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If any man follows me, in other words, if any man serves me, how do I know that a man is a servant of Jesus? Look at this Bible. This Bible says, where I am, there shall also, my who please? Can I hear you very well? My servant be. Where I am, there also will my servant be. I will not be in Elisha. And my servant will be in Jebu Jesha. That's not a servant. That's not a follower. I will not be in Capernaum. And my servant will be in Bethsaida. No. Wherever you see me, that's where you will see my servant. Now, I wish I could talk to you about that. I wish I could talk to you about it. Now, I want you to understand that a correct follower of Jesus who is not going to walk in darkness, who is going to walk in light, must always be found where Christ is found. That sounds very simple, but it is not. That sounds very easy, but it is not. That sounds very bland, but it is not. I like to say to you that every time you lie, will you tell me that Jesus is standing where you are telling lies? Could you have been where Christ is and you are found? We have falsehood is look I see a lot of preachers today who are supporting divorce who are encouraging people to divorce some of them are divorcee and they are preachers I have no problem with them but my problem is they should stop telling me that they are servant of Jesus because if they are where Jesus is standing on the matter of divorce, that's where they should stand. Listen. Have you ever at any time see Jesus organizing a crusade to get men saved and he collected offering there? Have you ever seen it before? 
Why do you do it? Why do you collect offering from the hands of sinners? Who is your master? Could it be Jesus? Where do you get that pattern from? I ask you. If actually you are a Bible believing Christian, where did you get that pattern from? Where have you ever seen Jesus in an open air crusade? I'm not talking about church meeting though. Open air crusade. Where we have gone to evangelize to get men saved and we are collecting offering there. Where have you seen Jesus practice that once? The Bible says, where I am, there my servant shall be also. Some of us chose never to collect such offering, such abomination, because we never seen Jesus collected it once. And look, I don't have a problem if I'm speaking to the general public. But I have a problem when I'm speaking to men of God who should set the standard and show how and who Christ is to the world. How do we do our own? And we are not standing where Christ is standing. Even our message does not look like his message. We seem to have devised our own messages. We preach a message that Christ never preached. So, this Bible says, where I am, there shall also my servant be. I cannot be standing on a, on a ground over a matter and my own servant will be standing on the opposite direction of where I am standing. It can't be in the opposition party. We must be in the same party all the time. Okay. You know, I wish I'm looking at time and I want to ensure that I completed this. I have never seen people who get angry like servants of God. And sometimes we have given our anger Bible name says it's only anger. So show me where Jesus gets angry. He said, but in the temple, he got angry, he took whip, and he whipped everybody out of the temple. I said, oh, you have not read that Bible very well. Though. As a matter of fact, the man who was the reporter, who was writing that report, said he was angry. But by the time the disciple understood, they said, ah, it was the zeal of his father's house that consumed him. Elisha was a great servant of God. Some young, innocent children were making jest of him. And he turned towards them and he cursed them in the name of the Lord. And 42 of them were torn into pieces. Future leaders were wasted. Future breadwinners were wasted. And that formed a pattern in the hearts of the disciples of Jesus. So one day Jesus was preaching. Possibly a very serious message was going on. And children came. I imagine somebody, one of them was pulling his dress, and that one was singing, and they were disturbing him. And the disciples were angry against those who brought those children. If not that Jesus was there, they would have cursed those children in the name of the Lord. 
But instead of him to curse them, he placed them on his knees and he blessed them. Now, listen. That was the light. That was the pattern. That was the example. That was the model. That was the prototype. That was the mold into which every man who follows him must be poured. You know what happened? He told them, let children, small children, let them come unto me. For theirs is the kingdom of God. So from that time, the disciple were no longer hostile to children. So one day, Jesus saw great multitude coming. And there was no food to give them. He called Philip and said, where can we get bread that these people may eat? Philip said, look, even if we have 300 pence and we go and buy, it won't go around these people. A small boy was around. He pulled Andrew, said, Uncle Andrew, is Jesus hungry? I have bread, oh, and I have fish. I will give it to Jesus. If not before, they will have given him a dirty knock on his head. Boah! When elders are talking, small children should keep their mouth shut. But he didn't do that because Jesus had taught them the light. Jesus has shown them the light. This is how a man who follows me must behave. So they brought him to Jesus. They said, well, now you call Samo. This boy said he has uh, five loaves of bread and two fishes. Uh, we will have sent him away, but you will say they should allow them to come. So we have brought him to you. And he took the bread. And he blessed the bread. And that bread fed 5,000 people from the hand of a small child. I wonder if Elisha had blessed those children, what would have happened through their lives? And you are here. You are using your anointing as a prophet to harass us. Who are you following? You are not a follower of Jesus. You are a shadower. Look, I wish God in this meeting will be able to speak to you very clearly. That you may understand that ministry is not just where you come and just harass people and just flung anointing, flaunt anointing, and you think you are a minister. No, you can be a minister, but not of Christ. You may be a minister, but not of the New Testament. I am the light of the world. If any man follows me, he will not walk in darkness. He will not follow the pattern of the world. That's what he meant. He will not walk after the order of the world. He will walk after my own order. Behold my servant. He shall not cry. He shall not lift his voice in the streets. Quiet, simple, and humble. That's the kind that I've read about Jesus. That's the pattern Jesus set for us. That's the order that Jesus laid down for us to follow as his followers. But can I say this to you? You know, I want to read this thing. I want to read it. But I'm finding it difficult to pull out of the verse I have read before I start to read all the prose that are under. That verse alone has brought a very strong challenge to my heart. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, if any man will be my follower, let him deny himself the greatest enemy in every man 
that will not allow God to touch him, to use him, is self. Who you are. Who am I? I don't want to tell you stories. You see, oh God, help me now. Peter came to the house of Colinius. Colinius was a general in the army. As soon as Colinius set his eyes on Peter, he fell flat on the floor. Peter lifted him and said, I'm a man like you. Don't do that. Sometime when I have the heart to encourage brethren, I tell them some of the people who are who are working, laboring with me in the ministry. In our kitchen, the head of the kitchen is a judge. And she's still serving. And when you see her carrying beans on her head, you will never know that at that journey. You won't know. And by law, a judge does not serve. They must serve a judge. But when she came to know Christ, she understands that she must serve. When I call her, I call her by her first name. I don't say, my Lord. You know why? Because she's a follower. The young man that is standing behind our camera here is a PhD holder. And yet standing behind camera. And he's not saying, I have doctorate degree from the University of Ibadan. I know where my mates are and what they do. I cannot stand behind camera. Who born you? If any man wants to be my follower, the first thing he must do is to deny himself. What does he mean to deny himself? He is to go blind to who he is. He is to forget about who he is. He is to say no to who he is. I was preaching in a meeting a few days ago. And they were asking me questions. At what point should you give up on a man? And I said, you don't. As long as that man is alive, you don't give up. So I gave them an example. I said, I have a son in the faith. In a in his younger years, while we are trying to raise him, oh God, it could be very tough. I told them that one day, he wrote me, and he said in his letter, he may, that he has never found anybody that is as stupid as I am. That I am the most stupid human being that ever lived. And he was talking to me. He abused me thoroughly. So I replied to him. And I said, if following Jesus is what makes me stupid, I'll be more stupid than I am now. Today, he's a little bit stable in the faith. One day he came to my house. And he said, how did you do it? that you did not curse me when I was abusing you. Excuse me. Already I have forgotten who I am. I don't remember that I have such power to curse. 
I don't remember. I have lost that. I have lost that. You know, we have WhatsApp groups and then we give instruction. And then somebody may not follow the instruction. Somebody will ask me, should we remove this person? And I will say, so if you are God, what would you have done? You want to exercise power to take life. Judas was stealing from the pores. Jesus knew he was stealing from the pores and he never removed him. You have to show me who you are following. You have to show me who your example is. You have to show me who your model is. You have to show me the templates that you are using to build your life and your ministry. I am the light of the world, Jesus exclaimed. If any man followeth after me, he shall not, he should not, he must not walk in darkness. He must not follow after the pattern of darkness. And this darkness is the devil. Am I communicating with you at all? God, who has brought us here, and for this meeting, has brought us here for a critical matter. And Jesus, our example, is whom I want to present to you to see. Whether you will accept to follow him from today. Or you will choose to follow Mr. Darkness. Can I read from our outline? So that you will not say, this brother just wrote us outline, he did not even read from it. Let me read. The foreword. Jesus is the central theme of the Bible yet remains unknown to many readers of the Bible and grossly misunderstood by many preachers of the Bible. I don't know where I will read in the Bible that I will not see Jesus. He himself said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. Everything from Genesis to Revelation speaks about Jesus. Unfortunately, it remains unknown to many people. Unfortunately, still, he remains grossly misunderstood, even by preachers. So when he said, if any man want to follow me. Let him deny himself. Number two, let him take up his cross. Do you remember he said so? Alright. That word cross, when he used that word, I expected those who were listening to him to say, what do you mean? Because at that time, he had not been nailed to the cross. I expected them to ask questions. What do you mean by the cross? But they didn't ask him any question. Which gave me an understanding that they understood what he meant. At another point, he called it yoke. I don't know whether you have seen it before. All right. By virtue of my work. I travel everywhere. And I have been to the core north many times. It was in the north 
that I first saw yoke life. Especially if you travel towards bringing KB, Sokoto, oh, you will find them plenty. Between Kotangura and Jega, you will see farmlands on both sides of the road. For the first time in my life, I saw what is called a yoke. Because the road was a little bit elevated, so the farm seemed to be in the valley on this side and in the valley on the other side. So I saw two cows with a log of wood lying horizontally on their necks. Okay? And at the middle of this horizontal um, um, wood is, a, is one that comes vertically down. And at the end of that one, there is a big hole attached. Okay? Once the cows are moving, the hole will be making ridges. All right? Because where I was, I was, as I was driving on that road, was a bit elevated. When I look at that yoke very well, it looks like the cross. It looks like a cross. It looks like what my teacher taught me in primary school as the sign of plus. Am I making sense to you? All right. So look at it. Plus, cross, yoke. Now, in the land of Palestine, where this word was used, I don't know so many people here, but I know Pastor Fashino. So let me use Pastor Fashino as an example. If Pastor Fashino has been a farmer for many years, and he had cows, he uses to plow his farm. And I'm just a new entrant. I just want to farm. And I've just gone to Kara to go and buy a cow. One stupid cow. Illiterate. I will come to Pastor Fashino and I will ask him to lend me one of his experienced cow. I will now tie his experienced cow with my mumu cow. Because his own cow is experienced, that cow knows what to do. Once I bring them to the farm, his cow knows that it is time to plow. My own mumu cow wants to bring it to the farm, not to eat. Do you understand me? But because Pastor Fashino's cow is experienced, he looks straight ahead. His neck is not towards the grass. This one wants to eat, but the yoke will not allow him to eat. Because this one is strong, sturdy, experienced. He can accommodate the recklessness and the excesses and the rebellion of this mumu cow. So once this one comes to the farm and he starts to move, because of the yoke that has attached my mumu cow to his cow, my cow is forced to move. If any man want to follow me, first he must deny himself. Second, he must take yoke upon his neck. My yoke. And as this cow is plowing, my own cow is forced to follow, even though a fellow. They are beside one another. They were at par, but one is a teacher, one is a learner. If you are looking at them from a distance, you will think that the two of them are experienced cows. But my mumu cow knows that this is my ogre. I'm only privileged to stand beside him as a fellow, but I'm a follower. Anybody who comes to the, car, to the farm says, 
these cows are great. They are doing great job. My cow, if he could think well, my cow, if he could speak well, we say, if you lose the yoke, my Ashiri go too. As they are praising us, now my master, they do them. No be me. Because I don't know how to plow. But my ignorance has been buried in the expertise of my teacher. No man can follow Jesus successfully without putting the yoke of Jesus on his neck. No man can be a correct follower of Christ when nothing attaches him to Christ that compels him to follow the example of Jesus. I will close now because the time given to me is almost exhausted and I want to I want to be a good boy so that Pastor Fashina will not suspend me. All right. Can I just read a few lines and we can pray? Even the disciples that walked with him did not understand him. So he asked them, but who say ye that I am? To this question, Peter responded, Thou art the Christ, the Son, or who please? Of the living God. Oh my God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. They know Jesus, the Son of Joseph. They know Jesus, the Son of Man. But they didn't know Christ, the Son of the living God. I wish I had the liberty of time to discuss that with you. It is not enough to be the son of your father. It is not enough to boast that you are a correct and a Jesha born man. It's okay. But are you also the son of the living God? If you are not, being born by Kabi of Ijeshalan is a useless thing. Being born by the president of CAC and you are his biological child, biological son, does not make any difference. Jesus was the son of man and still is and is also what please? the son of God. When he was born, he was called Jesus, the son of man, the son of Joseph, the son of the carpenter. But at Christ, rules out your salvation. Not knowing that Christ, that Christ is the son, the seed of the living God, is a fatal error in life. John wrote in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. I can't deal with that now because I want to close. Thus, our salvation, our life, our relationship with God and man, marriage and ministries depend solely on understanding who Jesus is. That was why knowing Jesus remained the sincere cry of Paul and all the saints of old. I will close with this. One day, Moses said, Show me thy way that I may know thee. Somewhere in Exodus, maybe 32. Show me thy way 
that I may know thee. When I came to John chapter 14, I read, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So by inference, Moses said to God, show me Jesus that I may know thee. Why was that a cry? That was Moses who threw a rod down and became a serpent. That was Moses that afflicted Egypt with all manner of plagues. That was Moses who lifted his rod and the Red Sea parted. And yet, after all that, he was crying, show me thy way that I may know thee. So a man can perform great miracles without knowing God. Stand to your feet. My desire tonight is not to bring academic. Judas looked like a follower, but eventually we realized he was a shadow. He attended all the classes. He learned everything that true followers learn. Yet, he was simply a shadow. He was simply a spy. And you could be in this school as a spy. You could have come to this conference as a spy. You could have come here to acquire new revelation from the word of God that you are going to use on Sunday to harass the church members. I pity you. But you have a chance to make a decision. I also chose to follow him. I took a decision one day and I said, Lord, tie me with yourself. Whithersoever thou goest, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be your God. Where you die, there I will die also. I took a decision. I took a decision to follow him. And I took a decision not to look at what people are doing in the world. I don't care how big you are in ministry. I only care to look at Jesus. If I can't find Jesus in what you are doing, I just take off my eyes. He doesn't appeal to me. Tonight, you can take a stand to follow. And I want to say to you, I hear him say, come after me and I will make you to become fishers of men. You can only be like him when you follow him. But you can't follow him if you do not deny yourself. You can't follow him if you not release your neck and take his yoke upon your neck and learn of him. Not learn about him. Close your eyes. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back. No turning back. I have decided. To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Who is here this evening? Who is saying, Lord Jesus, I hear that you are calling. I want to follow you wherever you go. I want to set you as my example. Put your yoke on my neck. If that is your prayer. Now, I'm not going to run into some, some serious wild prayers now. I want concrete decisions. If you are taking a decision to follow Jesus, setting him as your pattern, your example, can you walk up to this place? I want to pray with such people. Just come here. You decided to follow Jesus. Just come. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your prayer here today is, Lord Jesus, put your yoke on my neck. Set me as an example unto others. Let people see Jesus in my life, wherever I go. I want to be a pattern of Jesus, an example of Jesus. A copycat, if you don't mind, of Jesus. I want nothing else to be seen in my life apart from Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. Come take the whole world and give me Jesus. Come take the whole world and give me Jesus. Come take the whole world and give me Jesus. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Come take the whole world and give me Jesus. Come take the whole world and give me Jesus. Come take the whole world and give me Jesus. I am satisfied. I'm satisfied. Lord, whatever it takes, Lord, I want to follow. People may make jest of me, I will follow. Lord Jesus, would you like to bring this prayer point to a close? In Jesus' name we have prayed. Lord Jesus, we have come to a critical point in this conference and the point at which we are deciding to follow you. And these people came out of this congregation to say, Lord Jesus, whatever be time, whatever come my way, I want to follow you. And I want you to put your yoke on my neck. Voluntarily, I yield my neck unto you, Jesus. Lord, tonight, I'm asking you that you respond to the prayers of these people and you will put your yoke upon their necks in the name of Jesus. Oluwa 
ka wa na o le wa ni be ni bi kiwi to ba du o si ka wa na o le du o ni be pelu baba la le fi ajagare bo olorun awon mo pe ajagare ki se isoro awon mo pe agbelebure ki se isoro bibe ni ni ajaga mi ro eru mi si fu ye ajaga ti o ba rorun ki se se kristi eru ti o ba fu ye ki se ti e esu ni ti kuta mo e ru eyin o fu ye baba loni ki ajaga re bo olorun ni a do wa jesu ti a ba orin ni gbogbo irin ajuwa laye ni loruko ojo ja tele o ni bi to ba ya si ja ya be awon to ba pe ni eyan re je o je eyan wa jesu olorun re je wa ki olorun wa ma ja ya ko lo ko ko yi lo please hold us with your yoke in the name of jesus sustain this journey by your yoke in the name of jesus train us to become like you in the name of jesus Thank you Father. In Jesus name we have prayed. I can release you now. I don't know what the authority will tell you. Please they say you should not go. Please don't go. Yes.